Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and I'm doing a movie review this week on this wonderful holiday season, since we're in December, in these miserable pandemic times, yeah, go figure, and this time I'm going to be reviewing a sequel to the original Netflix film called The Christmas Chronicles 2, or simply Part 2. Yeah, where Kurt Russell reprised the role as jolly old St. Nick himself, Santa Claus, going for yet another great adventure. Um, this time he's joining in with his wife, Mrs. Claus, played by Goldie Hawn. Well, you may have saw her in the first film, um, towards the end of the movie, as a uh, big surprise. But this time she gets plenty of screen time, and I'm happy to see that. Because she's a great actress. And the fact that they're both a real life couple together. And they also had a new villain this time. And, well, yeah. Even though he is indeed a naughty elf, you know, pulling all these practical jokes and all these other schemes. Uh, he's played by uh, Julian Dennison as uh, Bill's Nickel. If you recognize him, he played Fire Fist, whose uh, name is Rusty, in the movie Deadpool 2. It kind of feels like, yeah, this might be the Deadpool 2 of all sequels, but of course it's not gun blazing around, you know, wall to wall action here and there. Uh, this is a family film. Which, of course, the original had a lot of hearts. Um, it was magical, hilarious at times, and all in all, it was very fun. I mean, I haven't seen a holiday film uh, this exciting um, since I've seen a lot of those other holiday films uh, in the past. But that's exactly what we we're going for these days, and especially watching this on a streaming service. Uh, and so I actually was very excited for the sequel. And But one thing you have to ask for yourself, I mean, will it top the original? Well, maybe. But I guess I could say it's a bit better than the original. I mean, as long as they still have the spirit, then we're okay. Uh, and this time... Just as long as it's not a copycat to any other. But, hey, Home Alone did it. And at least that was exciting. And speaking of which, um, Chris Columbus, uh, who did produce uh, the first film, uh, joining in with Mark Ratcliffe you know, for 1492 Pictures, he's now taken over to direct the film um, instead of the original director which was Clay Cadis, um, the same man who, who did the first, and, and he was actually, I guess at that point on, maybe he wanted to move on or so, so I guess if you have Chris Columbus to take over, you know, why not? I mean, but I, but keep that in mind, I mean, once you see the movie, I'm, I'm expecting to see some references to, you know, his previous work. Or so, and you know what? I'm gonna to get to it once I review it right now. It stars Kurt Russell, Goldie Hawn, Darby Camp, Kimberly Williams, uh, Posley, uh, Jazir Bruno, Julian Dennison, Tyrese Gibson, yes, Tyrese himself, uh, who has a wonderful singing voice. I mean, you remember him in the Coca-Cola commercial where he was on his headphones with his wonderful singing voice, you know, going straight into the bus, which will lead to the, <laughs> the song for Coca-Cola, and you know, always Coca-Cola. And of course, he was in um, Too Fast, Too Furious, and Transformers. Uh, Judah Lewis, Sonny uh, Sajik. Darling Love, Malcolm McDowell, 
Yes, Marco Medell from A Clockwood Orange. Uh, Patrick Gallagher and featuring the voices of Andrew Mogato, Debbie Derryberry. Yeah, you may remember her doing the voices of uh, Rio Oki in the Tenshi Muyo series, as well as uh, the voice of Jimmy Neutron in the movie and the series on Nickelodeon, among others. Uh, Jessica Lowe, Michael um, Yurchak, and Kara Walgren, yes, has done a lot of uh, voice acting for other shows, such as Samurai Shamlu, Witch Hunter Robin, uh, among many others. It's written by Matt Lieberman, along with Chris Columbus, who also directed the movie, the same man who gave us uh, Adventures of Babysitting. He also wrote uh, Gremlins. But of course, he gave us Home Alone, 1 and 2, along with um, Harry Potter, 1 and 2, uh, Mrs. Doubtfire, and of course, Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief. But then, of course, he did direct the Pixels, go uh, figure. The movie begins uh, where we meet uh, Kate Pierce, who's played by Darby Camp who's now a teenager, as we last saw her two years ago, who's now feeling very unhappy and bored by spending time with her family to have a wonderful Christmas in Cancun, Mexico. And by the way, I've been to Cancun, Mexico uh, back in 2001 uh, as part of my uh, 16th birthday gift. Uh, spending time at the cruise uh, with my cousins and joining them with my brother Jason. Had a wonderful time. We had a lot of beautiful beaches too. It was all clean, and it was really have I really had fun, you know, spending time there and you know relaxing and you know just have fun swimming and all. <laughs> and I gotta say, it looks even much beautiful uh, once you see the film. <laughs> Anyway, so he joins in with her mom, Claire, played by Kimberly um, Williams uh, Pazzi. Uh, joining in with her brother, Teddy, who's uh, played by uh, Judah Lewis. And this time, we meet her new boyfriend, uh, Bob Booker, who's played by Tyrese Gibson. Joining in with his son, Jack, who's played by... Jazer Bruno. She wants to be back at home where basically it's all snowing and more like a real Christmas all the way um, at Boston, which at this rate she lives in Laurel, Massachusetts. So her plan was she wants to run away. So that way she get an early flight back there and just have the best time of her life, you know, baking cookies, you know, hanging around with her friends, you know, building snowmans, you know, have snowball fights, and hopefully you'll be able to see uh, Santa again if that ever happens. You know, maybe, you know, wait until you know, Christmas when she'll be able to get all the presents and all. That sort of thing. So, anyway. She catches a shuttle that Jack eventually sneaks onto, yeah, because uh, they were trying to continue to go on to, you know, just to have fun, you know, at Cancun. Uh, they actually had to have uh, both Jack and, and Kate to go straight to the the kids' um, room, so that way they can spend time, but of course, you know, she tricks them. So, they were unexpectedly transported to the North Pole by the driver who turns out to be a Narforosis and very naughty elf named Belsnickel, who was played by Julian Dennison, who was hoping to get a plan to stop Santa Claus and Mrs. Claus, of course both played by Caruso and Goldie Hawn, to actually um, take over 
Christmas, you know, just destroy it and be, and be able to have his Christmas of his own, such as stealing the, by stealing the, the North Star and, and be able to take it to the South Pole and you know, joining in with his assistant elf, you know. Anyway, so Kate and Jack are discovered and being saved by Santa Claus himself. He brings them back to his house with Mrs. Claus. And the Clauses have gave uh, the kids a grand tour of their village, all it has to offer. And, and of course, now Kate probably suggested that maybe they should name Santa's village simply, you know, Mrs. Yeah, Mrs. Claus's village. <laughs> Yeah, I know that pretty uneven joke because it seems like they're going for the whole PC culture thing. Well, I don't want to go for that uh, on a holiday uh, movie. But yeah, they. I mean, once they get to the brief tour, you know, you see a lot of video games and you see a lot of candy canes that they're making, all these cookies and all this other stuff uh, with all the elves uh, helping around. It's really cool. So anyway, four of them have went back to the house for dinner. You know, that's where they made all these uh, wonderful, um, you know, feasts that they had, all of which are very healthy, you know, such as the broccoli cake and uh, <laughs> the carrots and lima beans uh, food and all. I mean, this is something. And then after that, Jack and Kate went to bed. Just as Bell's Nickel begins to attempt to destroy the village, to destroy Christmas all around, we also begin to find out his uh, origin as Mrs. Cox tells the kids about how Santa had went to Turkey and how he saved the elves from extinction. But then they adopted Bell's Nickel as he grew up. I mean, he started out as a as an elf, just like everyone else was, until he eventually became human. He definitely dislikes humans. Most of the time, he pulls a lot of pranks, you know, such as practical jokes around many of the elves, and most of all, even Santa himself. But, like, for example, the, the scene where he actually took his, uh, his face and yeah, he took himself into uh, a Coca-Cola, you know, type drink, <laughs> yeah, kind of like in in the first movie, you know, where we saw him uh, discovering uh, his uh, picture of him on the uh, cola, <laughs> like they, saying that he couldn't get my couldn't get me right or anything. Yeah, he criticized it. Um. So then, um, so because of all the the pranks and all those other hijinks that he's been doing, that's how he became a lot naughtier than ever before, transformed into a human and ran away, all the way straight into the South Pole ever since. Uh, but Bill's Nickel releases a beast, which happens to be uh, Jola, the Yule Cat. Yeah, it's a giant uh, cat, which at this rate... Um, Santa Claus was chasing right after. He ran into the reindeer pen and injuring the dasher. So Belsnecker releases a potion into the village that causes the elves to go completely insane. It was this particular magical dust which that's where everyone starts to go, you know, pulling all these pranks and all these other crazy sh sh ticks here. And then Belsnecker has stole the star that was on the top of the Christmas tree. While Santa and the others had confronted him, he attempts to take the star back, and in his struggle, it disappears, causing the power to go out in the village. And the elves will later start a snowball fight. So that leads uh, both Santa and Kate to go all the way straight to Turkey in order to get the forest elves to build a brand new star. They are led by Hulk Khan, who's uh, played by Michael McDowell, uh, voiced by him. And yeah, I know, I said it was the North Star here. <laughs> no, but it's true, it, it's the, 
is the star that would actually light up Christmas throughout the entire village in the North Pole. Um, so anyway, Jack leaves to get a route to, for a cure for these crazy elves around, while Mrs. Claus stayed behind to tend to Dasher and offered um, Jack to actually um, try to actually find a, a cure to actually stop him by, of course, um, giving, by Mrs. Claus giving him, you know, the courage and the explosions too of, of the two uh, Christmas cookies, yeah, the snow, snowman and uh, the, the gingerbread man, <laughs> of course, which will lead to that secret behind that, only that Jack was being chased down by Jola, and <laughs> Jack actually threw uh, the gingerbread man cookie straight at uh, Jola and ran away, well, he did took a bite of the snowman where he was, he was eventually about to climb up onto the cliff so he can grab the flower. The roots will help him stop the, the curse. Okay, anyway. Now, Kate and Santa have found the elves who are building a casting for the new star. And I know the elves themselves didn't believe that that was Santa because they started shooting them with arrows. And, kept, and then he later captures the power of the star Bethlehem inside it. But while flying back to the village, Bell's Nickel actually catches up to them because he actually built his own sleigh you know, with these um, different types of reindeer, but it's not out of the ordinary. It looks more like you know, a blend of, of hyena type of dogs that he got. Um, but when they were flying back to the village, um, Bells Nickel stole the star. They transport them back to uh, Boston in 1990, and this is where we're going to get to the reference right here. Uh, Jack was trying to find the route to bring it back to Mrs. Claus, but Kate attempts to buy batteries for Bells Nickel's device, yeah, because it was running out of power. <laughs> um, it was Duracell uh, batteries, and then suddenly, this is where Kate actually got caught, because um, just when she was about to pay for the batteries, the cashier actually found out that this was like paper money, saying that this dates back to 2020. Yes, of course, because seeing we're in 1990, I guess people are thinking that they're not so sure if the future is going to still use... Uh, <laughs> actual pep of money. Yeah, they, they think it's something out of the Monopoly. Yeah, the game said, wow. Like, I never thought that that, would, that could happen in 1990. So at that rate, um, she got caught by the security and wants up staying over there, which that would lead to a twist to find out that he was actually with this uh, young boy. Um, I don't, I'm not going to give that away, but I think you'll probably find out who he is. Um, but the reference I was going to talk about is where, yes, he did actually saw a screaming woman who just wanted to get to a plane to Chicago. And I'm thinking to myself, what do you know, Kevin McAllister's mother from Home Alone. <laughs> and I knew they were going to do that reference here. And that's where, of course, uh, Santa suddenly cheers them up by... By performing a song, uh, joining in with the uh, airport, um, you know, the airport um, employee, and and they had a song and dance around, hoping that there's going to be a miracle to happen uh, after all the flights have been canceled. But by the time the sun goes up, yes, it's going to be on time, and everyone will finally get a chance to to be home for Christmas. So now um, Santa and Mrs. So now Santa and Kate were on their way, you know, back to where they came from. I mean, once they finally got the batteries all set up for Bill's Nickel's device, and that way they can be able to catch up with Bill's Nickel to get the star they stole from them, and this what led to a bigger fight. Until finally, at at the end of 
of the, the climax, that's when Bill's nickel finally learns his lesson. I mean, because he didn't mean what he did. And now he finally transports back to being an actual elf. They finally put the... Uh, Kate already had put up the star. And as well as setting up all the dust so that way all the elves would go back to normal. And I also noticed there's a reference to that too when, you know, at the local movie theater in the village, it says they're playing Bad Santa. But of course, it changes back to Elf. <laughs> what do you know? So, yes, after all of that, uh, things went back to normal, and now, hoping that, uh, that now that things went back to what it was, uh, both Kate and Jack. I went back to Cancun, Mexico, um, which that's where we spot uh, Teddy, you know, already relaxing. Just right around um, in their parachutes, and then, of course, Teddy was finding out that, yes, both Kate and Jack were having fun, and they wanted to tell the whole story. And this is where, you know, Kate apologized for her, um, her, her attitude and all, and hoping that... Since, you know, she felt pretty left out that uh, Bob is, isn't like her father, you know, Doug, I mean, ever since um, her father died, I mean, it's revealed in the first movie, that hopefully uh, she'll be able to get along with Bob and as well as um, Jack. And I know Jack, of course, you know, has a lot of allergies and all. <laughs> And hopefully they'll get along and they'll have probably the best Christmas they'll ever have. Especially when they're singing the song, Old Christmas Tree. So, there you go. And they're joining in, of course, with Santa, Mrs. Claus, and all the rest of the elves. All singing the same song, too. They have the spirit. Now, one thing I had to ask for yourself, I mean, again... I would say yes, it's it's better than ever. Uh, it's very fun to, to see um, Kurt Russell uh, reprising this role again. I um, mean, he's definitely having fun. Um, I thought they really worked well too. Uh, I can I can definitely see that yes, there are some magic in the movie. Maybe there could have been more to it. I can understand that. But on the other hand, it it's still has had a lot of heart, a lot of sweetness around. It's very funny at times, too, you know, where, where you, <laughs> or at times, you know, Santa couldn't get much along with uh, Bill's Nickel, even though Bill's Nickel himself, you know, just felt like he just wants to be as sneaky as ever, you know, wants to pull a lot of uh, crazy pranks and all, but... But maybe it's because, you know, he just felt too naughty, like he just doesn't get much attention at all. That's that's probably another reason why he's acting like this. And that's understandable. It's almost like if, you know, how Kate feels too when, when she felt like, you know, she's being left out. Like things are just not the same, you know, with Christmas and all. And felt like, you know, this is just, well, <laughs> something that... She didn't really expect it much. But at the end of the day, you know, she learned her lesson, and, and so was Bill's nickels. So they, they knew that by then, you know, they'll be able to have fun. They'll have a wonderful Christmas. They'll, they'll be able to be cheered up after all this time that's going around. And you know what? Things will go for the better. Anyway. And, um... It's also great to see Goldie Hawn back again because it's been a while since I've last seen her in a movie. Uh, last time I saw her in a movie, well, besides seeing her in a small role in, in the first film, yeah, she was in the movie Snatch. Uh, that was a terrible film, but it's great that we get to see her have plenty of screen time, and, and we also know that she's very magical. She, you know, she uses her own... Uh, 
magical powers the same way that Santa Claus does. You know, the cast is great as usual, um, especially uh, Tyrese uh, as Bob Booker joining in with his son Jack, and and I, I have to say, you know, at least they weren't you know annoying as you may expect it. That's a good plus. I mean, we, we want them to be exactly as talented as they could be and more believable. With all the elves uh, speaking in their elvish uh, language, too, you know, that sounds more gibberish. I mean, surprisingly, even Kate even learns, too. Because you know, after all, I mean, she was a true believer. Just like everyone else could be. It has a lot of wonderful musical score by Christoph Beck, uh, the same man who also did the score for the Peanuts movie, among others. And so it gives it the spirit. Um, nice cinematography here by Don Burgess. I mean, beautiful shot, though. Um, all CGI on, on all the effects, as well as uh, the elves themselves. Uh, very well done, just like how they did in the first movie. Um, a lot of funny moments here and there. <laughs> As I probably already said. So, I gotta say, Chris Columbus uh, did a great job of uh, directing this. Uh, taking over for Clay. And it shows, because it gives it that uh, wonderful feel. So, all in all, it's... it's it's as uh, heartwarming as it could be. Um, you know, I, I had fun, just like I did with the first movie. I mean, when I reviewed the first movie, though, I wasn't quite myself, though, because, you know, I had a cold. But it's great that at least when I saw this, you know, I didn't have a cold at all. But it sure got me to make me feel better here. <laughs> But check out uh, the sequel. I, I think we'll have fun. I mean, it's, I know I know Netflix has been going through hard times too. I mean, I know they're trying to go for something new here and there. I mean, even though they brought in that terrible movie uh, this year, uh, well, you probably already know what I'm talking about. The movie that eventually gets a controversy and all. But at least here we got something more heartwarming than ever, and I think all fans should watch this more. Oh, and just so you know, um, this is also the first Netflix film that's being played in select theaters. Uh, Cinemark was actually playing this uh, in three states, um, but they're also playing it at the drive-in theater as well. In fact, even the, the Pacific Violin drive-in theater is playing it, so that's cool. I mean, it's amazing that, yeah, since they're, they're having trouble trying to play you know, pretty much any theatrical film to come out, you know, due to this pandemic times. At least they are actually playing movies that are already available on streaming. So, you know what? <laughs> Maybe it's better off if they start playing the films that are, that are um, from all these other streaming services to actually be played at, at a local drive-in so people don't have to waste, you know, that amount of money to watch them. I mean, that's a great suggestion here. But I really would love to have a lot of theatrical films being released there and be able to watch it you know, to be perfect for it. Yeah. So that's The Christmas Chronicles 2. And I get the sequel. Um, five stars. Just like the first one. Uh, I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.